name is Jessica. I've had uh, ME for about five or six years now. Yeah, um, first heard about ME a long time ago. Um, started struggling with my health back in 89. Uh, my name is Karen Wally and I'm 56 years old. I started with ME 12 years ago. I don't really know where to start, but growing up I used to care for my dad a lot. Um, he got really ill at one point and was bed bound for quite a few years. It took me 15 years to get a diagnosis. And I had to go into the doctor's surgery and say, thump my fist on the desk and say, I want something done. Um, day to day life, um, I suppose I'm in the house, I'm housebound most of the time really. Um, I don't always manage to get dressed every day, uh, brush my teeth, have a shower, um, even make myself my food and drink for the day. I have to rely on my parents and you know whoever's in the house, my siblings. Um, but uh, most of the help that I've got unfortunately has been through um, like private health care because the kind of experts are, are mostly private people so it's been, it's been difficult in, in a financial sense as well. It's been difficult at home obviously because when you go through life knowing that the people who should be helping you don't believe that you're ill it's really difficult in your own head to, to, you know, to deal with that because you think, oh well, if they don't believe that I'm poorly, you know, am I poorly? Or well, if they don't believe me, who who really will? So it's um, it's been quite a struggle. Um, but when my mum found the ME group, the support group here. Um, it really just like it changed everything. Obviously, I was still poorly, but going somewhere and knowing that other people felt exactly the same as me, that they could understand when I was saying that I felt like my brain needed unclogging, and that wasn't weird to them because they understood. It was brilliant. Knowing that you're not on your own and your family isn't on their own either, because obviously when it's such an all-encompassing illness like ME is, you know, it completely takes over your life. Obviously it impacts your family as well, so knowing that my mum can come and she can speak to other mums who are looking after their children of very varied age, you know, it was helpful for, for all of us really. Um, my body shut down and in the space of a six week period I went from um, working 100 plus hours a week in an office, high stress environment, to couldn't tidy a front room in a day. I was then bed bound for eight years. Um, dark room, no noise, no television, no books, no music, no anything really. It was a pretty dark time, pretty horrible time. Um, the worst thing I find about the illness is because we don't have the energy, it's not a case that we can fight against it. You know, if we had, I don't know, cancer, you you can fight it. You know, you can try and raise money. You, you know, you have the energy to take it on. With ME, it's very passive. It's very much surviving. There's no activity. There's no action that you can take to make progress. It's all about inactivity and finding what you can manage without making yourself iller. Um, one of the big things I say about ME is not just the person, the individual that suffers from it, it's their extended family, um, it's the people around them, it's the people caring for them that suffer with the illness, you know, because it is totally overwhelming, it overwhelms your life, you know, it's not like it's just one part of your life and you can still get on and do other things, it affects everything. Like most people with ME and fibro, you know, we're not the couch potatoes, couch potato type people, we are people that are hard working, that we're grafters, you know, we don't mind working hard and 
making progress. Um, a lot of the famous people are, are classic examples um, of people with ME. You know, the, the woman that was the first round the world yachtswoman, solo yachtswoman, she has ME. And it's that type of people, the people that actually want to get on in life and want to put the effort in and get the rewards. And then this comes along and it just stops everything. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't get upset when people don't understand because before I'd heard of it, I wouldn't have understood. And I can still understand that. It is incredibly difficult to understand if you don't live it either directly through living it yourself or someone close to you living it is the only time you'll have any understanding of the illness. Uh, and there's very little support and help. You know, most of it is groups of people all with the condition sitting around and discussing best practices of, you know, have you tried this supplement? Have you tried doing this? And Got on the balls one morning to go and look after my granddaughter. Did three stops, got off the bus, I couldn't walk. Couldn't lift my right arm leg and couldn't speak. Um, was admitted to hospital for a week, querying a stroke. Got worse, completely went off my legs, couldn't walk. Um, diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome and ME and was told to go home and it would go in three years with no treatment whatsoever. Nothing, no medication, that was it. Um, went to see, then when the doctor died, it said go to CBT and physio. Did the CBT, a lot of people say it didn't, doesn't help, but to me it, the thing it did is helped me to accept I'd got something wrong, so stop fighting it. So it did help with me. Physio, absolutely no good whatsoever. You can't do you can't do physio when you feel so weak. I had to finish work, which I was a nurse, so that had to go. Um, and you just learn to live with it. After seven years, I found this group, and it was the first pair me and my husband came. I managed half an hour, and it was the first people I'd ever spoke to with any, and realised everybody was in the same boat. You don't realise everybody's, and when people start talking about their symptoms, they've got exactly the same symptoms. I still live, still live with it. I've had seen nobody. ME is in the medical profession is classed as an orphan disease because there's no medication to cure ME. Pharmaceutical companies won't put any money into it. My grandson is 14 years old. He's a twin. He has a twin sister and he was fine until about four years ago and then he started to get more and more tired and more and more exhausted and having to have time off school and my daughter found it very difficult to get any support and help for him initially but eventually she did manage and he does get some support now uh, he's now 14 he should be at high school but he doesn't go to school at all he has Tutors was twice a week, and we think he must be getting a little bit better because they've increased it to three times a week now. Gosh, it, it was it was literally fumbling in the dark, and I got a diagnosis. Finally, I said, "Look, maybe it's food intolerance because I was piling on weight like crazy, but I wasn't eating. It wasn't." to do with eating, it was to do with inflammation and this is quite typical I've found that gosh I went I went from nine stone to fourteen and a half stone and I stopped weighing myself when I reached fourteen and a half stone and he said he asked me one question and he looked at me and he said you've got chronic fatigue 
and they changed my antidepressant and put me on um, exercise on prescription. Had to do aerobic exercise, swimming. Well, I went and did it, but I had to sit in the car for over half an hour after I'd done it to recover. And when I kept going to see him, I couldn't find the words to explain to him how I was feeling and how it wasn't really helping. I was swimming as slowly as I could so I could do it. But you, you can't find the words to explain how it all is. You come out, somebody asks you a question and your mouth speaks for you and you don't... Oh. The wrong words come out. Vaguely related or if you was well that would be what you were saying but the words that come out are not appropriate they're not the right words found this group and I found my carer found out about pairing and um, one getting my brain back a bit except for when and everything's really really stressful anything can be stressful like having a conversation and not being able to find words and somebody say, well come on, come on, What's, what are you trying to say, think about it. I can't, I can't find the word.